Hello, I'm Mr. Red. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Red. Go right to the source and ask the horse. He'll give you the answer that you endorse. He's always on a steady course. Talk to Mr. Red. People yakety-yak the streak and waste your time a day. But Mr. Ed will never speak unless he has something to say. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. And this one will talk to him. His voice is hoarse. You never heard of a talking horse? Well, listen to this. I am Mr. Ed. Couch Pilots, All of My Friends, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is the Black Boisterous, and across from me, shouting from the mountaintops, it's Captain Philip Restisher. Hey, on a mountaintop. <laughs> I love that. Oh, boy. How you doing, buddy? Good. How'd you like that intro with <clears throat> Mr. Ed? Classic. You never heard of a talking horse? Bum, 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 bum. Loved it. It made me well, th- listen to this. It made me feel like, remember, Dennis the Menace, Leave it to Beaver, Andy Griffith Show. I am Mr. Ed. Is that Richard Nixon doing a Mr. Ed impersonation? Yeah, how was it? Nice. Uh, did Wilbur. You, did you watch those on uh, Nick at Night? Damn right I did. Yeah, yeah I used to, too. Uh, a very wholesome, very wholesome show. The guy who was singing the intro to uh, Mr. Ed, he sounded like he was just smiling the whole time. Like oh, he was, he he was, was just, happy. Yeah. I bet he, he, I bet he had like doing, a cardigan on and a pipe. Oh, yeah, and I bet you he was fucking take, popping some pills. Yeah, they were popping pills back then. Or like an opium pipe, even. I don't Ooh, know. Ooh, opium pipe. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was... S- smoke them, them opium peace pipes? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing so good. How about, um, what's, what's new in your neck of the woods? Well... It's March twelfth. Yeah, two big things coming up. One, can I guess one? You can guess one. Your birthday. My birthday is coming up. It's your birthday, yeah. Huh? Happy, happy birthday to you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, two, get the lead out. Peoria Civic Center. DSJ. Bow, it- bow, bow. No, <laughs> wrong song. Bow, 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 bow. Oh, it's the wrong right? song. Right? No. And she's buying a stairway to heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great song. Both great songs by Led Zeppelin. Wonderful. Give the let out. It's coming back. Uh, DSJ is back from hedonism, finally. Down Syndrome John, the guy, a tarmac worker out on the runway. He works as a roadie for Led, Led Zeppelin's cover band. Get the let out there, and they're going to be here in our hometown. Yeah. And he is back, and boy, did he give us a bombshell. Mm. He pulls up. He, he he asked us to get him a limousine at the airport. That, I was like, that was odd. We have never, I was like, that's never weird, done that. Because you know, usually he just takes the bus, the, the mega bus, the one dollar mega bus. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? We we missed you. You've been gone. Blah blah blah. Sure. We, we extended a courtesy sure. to him. Pulls up at the hangar. Yeah. Gets out. Then, this long-legged Filipino girl. Right. She had legs that went up to her chest, I would say. Yeah. And then her chest was on fire. I was, my mouth dropped. I mean, I was like, bah, 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 what? I said, I, I, I think I'm going to heat. I said, ba ba booey And. his penis. <laughs> we were like. Welcome back, DSJ. Who is this young lady? And he just had this fucking grin on his face. You know that grin. Yeah. But it was like bigger than it usually is. And her name is bizarre. It's not a name that you would hear in the United States. She's very much Filipino. Her name was uh, Fukmi. Fukmi, exactly. And he said, guys, this is Fukmi 
my new wife. He got married. Married at hedonism. Yeah. Man. I could not believe it. He, he, he done did it again, you know? This I, is second round two on these on this marriage. Uh, I, it's crazy. Yeah. I, his first wife died. He has a baby. Yeah. DSJJR. Yeah. Um, he goes to Heaton and he stayed for like <laughs> almost a month. He was yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know how he did that. I, I mean, he can afford it. And he's fucking got money coming out the ass. I, th- I think what happened is I saw some pamphlets for the Make a Wish Foundation. I think they. Paid, they I think they paid. For oh, it. I think Make the, a Wish paid for the it. The guy is a fucking baller. So, Fugmi is now Mrs. DSJ. Yeah. It's. He's happy. I mean, he's he he came in, you know. Like I said the limousine pulled up. He got out. He introduced us. Apparently, it was obvi- we didn't know at the time, but obviously it was a little bit of showboating for his new oh, wife. Yeah, which but- is, you know what? At first, we're, obviously we're apprehensive to, to shell out that money for that, but at the end, it was worth it. Our Patreon's blowing up, mm-hmm. so why not? We can do stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. So uh, yeah, we're very excited for him. Um, it's a, a fresh start, a, yeah, a clean slate. And he's getting ready to go on tour, though. I, I, I worry. I don't know. I don't know if she's going or if she's staying here with us or what. What the deal is? I don't know either. Um, it, she's welcome to call into the show, you know, and leave us a message about yeah. it if she wants. Yeah. What's but, the um, What's the number for Fukmi to it, call? Nine ten pilots one, which is in turn. It's a nine one zero, and then um, my mouse is not working. Is that right? Oh no! Uh, my computer's like frozen. Uh oh. Yeah, this is going to be bad for the rest of the show. I think. <laughs> like, I, can't, I haven't memorized everything that we're doing. <laughs> this is really is. We might have to stop here in a minute um, after we banter. Oh, here we go. Something's up. A- anyway, she can call in, or anyone can call in. It's nine ten pilots one. And there's a boy. What is going on with my computer? That is unfortunate. Um. Anyway, DSJ. I haven't seen him this happy in a long time. Even though he does have a child, um, I think I think he's had a lot of hardships in his life. And uh, thankfully, this is a kind of a shining beacon that he can look forward to. Sure, forward. and and I didn't want to spoil it at all. So I mean, usually I'm the I'm I'm the level headed one. Mm-hmm. Like you, you go with his whims. I fly by the seat of my pants with and the, the seat of that retarded young man's pants. Right, um, and I'm, I'm 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 apprehensive. I worry about him. Um, but I was like, you know what? Congratulations, Fugmi is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, do we mention her legs yet? Yeah, they went up to her. Her B O O B S S. That's right. I, I, we S's? Did <laughs> Boobs. Is, 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 is. <laughs> so, so, hey, more power to him. I don't know how he gets these chicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, I guess. Uh, but and, yeah. But the only thing I, 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 I think we should talk to him, he needs to keep that thing wrapped up because he doesn't need a little DSJJRJR. Yeah, Junior Junior. Jun- he doesn't need a little, uh, little Chinaman uh, baby running around here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and honestly, the news just keeps coming. Um, he, when he was at Hedonism, he said, I'm going to write like six, seven pages Right, a day. he was going to write that book, his, he, mem- his memoir. He did it. I have the first draft. I'm, I'm looking over it. Are there a lot of errors? Oh, yeah, you betcha. <laughs> but I tell you what, it is, he wrote over 400 pages while he was Holy- there. And found a wife. I don't know how I, I you know what honestly that does I wish make he sense. did I wish he did that much work here yeah I he, hear I wish he was I that much you. productive here I, women like you know like last episode women love me girls enjoy me even the ones who never saw me like the way that I rhyme at a show a reason why man I don't know so let's go girls like guys with skills last episode you touched on uh, Napoleon Dynamite Napoleon Dynamite is all about having skills right sure um, and DSJ what's that Liger uh, yeah he, he's a uh, Bo staff skills, right? Yeah. Nunchuck skills. Um, but uh, obviously he has a skill, DSJ, and the skill he's, he wrote a book. And I think that is very sexy to women. If, if, if a man can take a practice. He probably had a pipe. An opiate you know, pipe, yeah. He was probably sitting by the pool with a pipe and you know, writing and his memoir. Sure. Man. I can't wait to get through the rest of it and kind of uh, make some corrections, rearrange a few things. But I think at the end of the day, we're going to have ourselves a best seller. Wow. We got to make sure we do a lot of pre orders because that's how you get on the New York Times list. Yep. Get those pre sales because that counts for the first day. He's asked both of us to for blurbs. Sure. And originally I was going to write the forward, but he's going to, he's asked Donald Trump to do it. Okay. We're, we're waiting. Right. We got a soft yes. I honestly, I think he'll crap out, but right now the, the president of the he United States. He asked if States, he could just tweet it instead of writing it. And, but in that, in that, we will copy and paste the tweet to well, make that the screenshot forward. and then just put the screenshot on Skip the cover. Skip Glover's glue and, and tape it on. And no, glue no, no, it. no, just screenshot on to the cover. Okay. 
that, those are great ideas, and this is why you're going to be credited in the book as well. Oh, thank you, you. You bring great ideas like this to the table, guess what? You get some credit. I, 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 hey, as long as DSJ is happy and Fukmi is happy. She seems happy. Um, she doesn't I, speak very much English, though. No. Um, she just kept saying, yes. Yeah. Yes. And she kept saying, Fook me, Fook me. And <laughs> We're I like, we know your name. Right, right, we know your name. You know, it's... it's you know, it's a common Filipino name, and you're like, "Fuck me," right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, she, uh, she, uh, and when she got out of the uh, car, I don't know if you when she she dropped her purse. I don't know if you saw this, huh? And uh, like everything in the purse spilled out. A um, bunch of different, you know, like there's some candies, women things, private women things, and, and some cards spill out, like your, you know, Master cards, your credit cards. I did not see a green card in there. And well, so let's, let's try to stay positive. I, I I don't want to. I don't want you to fall into my negative thinking. So let's just try to think positive. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want to go down the. Oh, uh, oh, gee, oh, I hit oh. myself in the face. That, you oh, you got to bow more carefully when we respect each other. Um, yeah, I don't want to go down that black rabbit hole that is Blake's ne- Blake's internet. You know, <laughs> of of, uh, of negative thinking. So. Anyway, um, just a lot of exciting stuff to report. Super psyched for DSJ. He seems to be his old happy self. And I hope that's reflected in the work that he does not only here, but at the jobs that he has as a sure. DJ and a roadie. Um, obviously we, we've talked about how he was fired from McDonald's. That's not even really on the table. Before. Right. Well, which that was like his, like just for like tax purposes. And for I, his I, 401k. Think he, I think he met a lot of girls doing that too. Yeah. Well, I mean, he obviously met enough girls at hedonism. Yeah. I'm thinking about asking, uh, Stewart's Malls, if she wants to go there for, she said, she says, I, my next vacation, I want to go on a beach. I don't care where it is, but a beach. I'm, Whoa. I'm thinking about it. I think you got this one in the bag, buddy. <laughs> and hedonism is, it's not, you don't have to be naked, but you can be. Is that right? Uh, Yeah. But, the, well, there is certain areas where you have to be naked. Okay. Like if you go to that, if you go to that spot on that beach, you have to be naked. Um, what, um, what's your grooming situation? Like if you were like, just like total body grooming, what would you do to prepare yourself to go to that nude part of the beach? I would, before we left on that trip, I would trim up and just have like a, uh, I don't try, try to make a pun here, but like a, a landing strip. Okay. Okay. I, oh, as it pertains to what we do as pilots. Thank you. Got it. Got it. Very good. You're, oh, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I think, uh. I think body grooming. Would you ever go to hedonism? No. Um, I would need some sort of lubrication between my thighs, I think. Or I'd get a lot no. of chafing between my, my well, thighs. I'm not, I'm not talking about the naked part. Would you go no. there for a vacation? Uh, I'd have to look I'd have to look online. I, I honestly, I know almost place. nothing about it. It's a beautiful it. place. Is it? Yeah. It's kind of pricey, but it's a beautiful place. Is it better than Fire Island? I don't know about Fire Island. I, 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 personally, I want to go to, uh, to Destiny. Are these all like sexual themed swingers? Resorts? Swingers resorts. Swingers resorts. Yeah. Okay, I don't know that I would do that. Really? I think I'm too insecure about how I look that I would. I would feel. I'd feel very weird at a place like. But that. you don't have to be naked, Jason. Yeah. Just the end part. You have to be naked. Just the end. Like when you have sex. I thought you meant just like the tip of my penis has to be naked. <laughs> hey, the tip of my penis looks good. <laughs> That's all we can ask, right? Right. We're aging. We're getting on in age. If the tips of our cocks still look good, that's all we can ask. Right. I, I would, I mean, four-star restaurants, beautiful men and women. Yeah. And the, the possibility of having sexual encounters with mysterious people. Sounds I can do that here, you know. Yes. <laughs> Touche, let, let, my friend. Let, 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 me, let me say, Touché. instead of that, let me say, I've done that here. Why would I, <laughs> why would I need to go there? Why would I pay a bunch of money to have uh, I think you have a better chance if you go there. Like for it, the way I've been, I mean, because I've done some investigation, but for me, like to do it here is a lot of work. Like there's a lot of work involved. As there, it's like you're just throwing you into the Easter basket. And you're just looking for a chocolate buddy. Are they, that's a great <laughs> analogy. <laughs> um, is it? I don't know. Is it that? Is it is it that easy as you say it is though in a place like that? Because I feel like it's always it's sold to you. You're sold a bill of goods that way to where it is that like that. But in the end, it's a lot of people just like like dumpy looking folk who you would want to touch with a ten foot pole necessarily. It's still fuck. Okay. <laughs> still oh, that, fuck oh, that's I'm sorry. You're a uh, a quantity, not quality guy, right? That's all right. <laughs> Molly's the exception that proves the rule. Thank there. you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Um, Enough about me. Oh yeah, you know, let's actually let's let's dig back into you a little bit more. Uh fan feedback? No fan feedback. 
No fan feedback. The well I, is. I, I blew my wad on the first, the last episode we did. The well is dry, huh? Yep. It's dry as. <sighs> All right. Well, let's talk about oh, as dry as a chocolate Easter bunny in a basket, huh? Um, I was going to say as dry as a hard boiled egg. Oh, and you know what? Those are dry. <clears throat> Thank you for saying that. Well, until you get into the middle, like until you get the crack, the shell cracked. Okay. It's dry. Yeah. Try to rub your dick ac- across one. It's I don't, dry. I don't think my dick. What is, does our dicks have to do with pilots? Uh, what is, my dick's not the bellwether for whether something's dry or not. So <laughs> your dick has never made a woman dry. Oh boy, yeah, we are really going down a dark path. Um, is there something you want to ask me? You said enough about me. Where you want to take this in a different direction? <laughs> I just, I, I, I figured by this time we should probably just go on our merry way. Rub my dick on an egg. Hard, hard bull egg. Oh, I, was, I thought you were talking over easy. <coughs> just drape it across it. <laughs> Love a fried egg sandwich. Oh boy, with mustard. Good. I love all those things too. <laughs> Are you still having problems? Do you have ninety nine problems? My mom sent me a, a, a meme. It said, "I have ninety nine problems. If you let me pop that zit, I'll only have ninety eight." <laughs> it's like you sick fucking old lady. You died on a Saturday morning, and I had you placed under our tree right here. And I had that house that your father, of your father's bulldozed to the ground. Mom always said dying was a part of life. I sure wish it wasn't. Little Forrest, he's doing fine. About to start school again. I make his breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. I make sure he combs his hair and brushes his teeth every day. Teaching him how to play ping pong, he's really good at it. We fish a lot. And every night we read a book. He's so smart, Jenny. You'd be so proud of him. I am. He uh, he wrote a letter. He says, I can't read it. I'm not supposed to, so I'll just leave it here for you, Jenny. I don't know if Mama was right or if it's Lieutenant Dan. I don't know if if we each have a destiny or if we're all just floating around, all accidental like on a breeze. But I, I think maybe it's both. Maybe it's both happening at the same time. I miss you, Jenny. If there's anything you need, I won't be far away. What's he eating Gilbert Grape? Couch Pilots. Oh, my bad. Today we discussed the pilot episode of Mr. Ed from the year of our Lord, 2000 Ed 4. That, my friend, is a great year. 2004 was a good year, baby! Oh, boy. Good year for the roses. Oh, hell yeah, it was. And oh, yeah, it this, was. this is what I like about even years. We know there's going to be an Olympics, right? Sure. We know, we, without fail, there will be an Olympics. Which makes it a good year for the roses, in itself. Right, because at the end of the Olympics, they just throw roses on the winner, right? Right. Uh, it's 2018 right or now. Or stuffed animals. Oh, do they throw stuffed animals? That's a new thing. Are there stuffed roses? Mmm. I think there probably are. Could be. I think if it is a thing, there could be a stuffed version of it. Like Rule 34, you know Rule 34 on the internet? Uh-uh. Um, if it exists, if it exists in life, then there is a porn version of it. On the internet. A porn version? Pornography. And that's called Rule 34. There, uh, Couch Pilots has a Rule 34 as well. A long time ago, IBWIP actually had a, a Hugga 34. Did not know at the time it had to do with that, but it was a Hugga 34. Hugga? Yeah, hug a 34. It was a contest. Okay. What does that mean? What, hug, what was? It? Tell me about the contest. Hug a fat girl. What's a 34? The waist size? It was, just, size? it was a code word for a fat girl. Okay. And um, who was on the show at the time? Uh, Uncle Bubba and Mrs. Bubba. Where are they at now? Um, Uncle Bubba and Mrs. Bubba aren't together anymore. Uh-oh. Uncle Bubba has, uh, he still has this cockfighting ring, um, but he lives in Chillicothe. He has a cockfighting ring, huh? Mm-hmm. He raises cocks to a cockfight with. Wow, I had no idea. Boy, the, the, the depths that we could get into with old Sorry, IBW. I, no. dig- I digress. I asked. I, I was genuinely interested. And then when you started saying cock a bunch, I lost interest. <laughs> Now, if it's a, it a, it a very cock centric episode, a show in general, right? Cock strong, right? You got a tattoo that says cock strong on your, on your body. Yep. And why wouldn't you? <laughs> um, you ever think about getting a Couch Pilots tattoo? <clears throat> yeah, I actually have. Yep. That's the next one I'm going to get. Where would you get it? Like right above the crack of your ass? No, I'm going to get it right above the urinal for the IBWIP one. 
I think I would do um, like the the symbol for couch pilots has got the circle and then the wings on either side. I think I'm gonna do a wing on each butt cheek, and the circle Ooh, would be my nice. butthole. What do you think about nice. that? I like it. It's good. It's a, it's a big tattoo. It's a big commitment. So, yeah, it would be a big tattoo. Your your asshole is huge. <laughs> it, is, it is problematically large. Gaping, for sure. some would say. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that, but you might be right. I, I rarely see it. You I see may it much be wrong. more often than I do. <laughs> Uh, 2004, as we said, such a great year. In fact, uh, so much so that we have to go back there in our minds to properly digest Mr. Ed. Because right now, we, we I always say this. You think back 2004? That wasn't that long ago. It was 14, 14 years ago. 14 years ago. 14 years. Things are wildly different now than they were just a mere 14 years ago. So we have to prepare our minds, our bodies, and, and our, our souls, souls to receive this pilot as we're talking about it. So we can we can judge it. As it was when it was made. Right, because 2018, okay, 2004. There's, there's so many things that we have now that we didn't have back then. Band-Aids! Band- I get cut all the time. I, I went to a, a in resort 2004, recently. 2004, you'd, you'd bleed to death. I would have bled to death. I went to the uh, resort recently, and my foot got all cut up on the bottom from all the from all going all the swimming pools. What did I reach for? A Band-Aid. Yeah, 2004, wouldn't happen to I would die that. of sepsis. Uh, um, we have... Uh, Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox, Will Smith, and what's... Computer-generated uh, graphics? Yeah, or? what's that? CGI. CGI. So what does that stand for? Because I just said graphics. Computer-generated... Imagery. Very good. Very good. Thank you. On it. You were on it. Um, so let's talk about some things that happened in 2004 so we can get, get okay. back there. Queen Elizabeth II christens the RMS Queen Mary II cruise liner, currently the largest ocean liner in the world. Wow. Uh, love uh, English royalty stories. Um, I we, love English uh, cruise liners. Yeah, we used to. Me and Molly just got done watching uh, the uh, first two seasons of that show about Queen Elizabeth. So yeah, what was it called The Crown? Yeah, it's good. This is my impression of the horn from a cruise liner. Ready? Okay. God. I fucking hit it, dude! Right. That's almost as good as my ALF. You do an ALF? Yeah. What does that say? What does ALF stand for? Hey, Willie! Extra lounging farts? Yeah, that's right. ELF. ELF, the TV Alien, show. What was it? What was it? it was Alien. Alien life form. Uh, and it was funny. Fuck we, me, right? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you said it before I got a chance to. Uh, it had ALF, Alien life form, and then you have ET, extraterrestrial. Why can't we just settle on one? Right. Why do you have to give aliens all these different acronyms? That's too hard to remember. I've been I've been listening to a podcast called Conspiracy Theories, mm-hmm. and they talked about uh, Area Fifty One. What did they say about it? There has been some fucked up shit happen there, and it's been confirmed. But the alien thing, I don't believe. You don't think there's been aliens? No, I think it's just been uh, Air Force testing all different kinds of um, planes. What about ghosts? What about ghosts? Are there ghosts at Area Fifty One? I I don't think there's ghosts in Area 51, but people have died because of ghosts. Ghosts. What about um, Sasquatch? Is Sasquatch there? Not at Area 51. It's in the forest and up and by Portland. Okay. Well, what's that? Okay, that's the oh oh chupacabra. Is chupacabra uh, out there? Fucking chupacabra all up in that motherfucker. Oh really? Yeah, because it's the desert. Yeah, there's like seven chupacabras there. Wow. Chupacabra. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad. <laughs> Oh, merciful heavens. Um, Spain withdraws Spanish troops from Iraq. You say Iraq or Iraq? Iraq. Okay. Iraq. 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 Poo poo caca. So, end of like uh, September 11th, 2001, right? They, they start a war, essentially. You know? And then 2002, we say, let's look around. See if we can find some weapons of mass destruction. Can't and, find a and damn they, one. Maybe, maybe we'll just take a little bit of oil too. Let me just take a little. Let's just take a little bit of oil. And, shh, don't tell anybody. So they start a war, and then uh, you have all these uh, allies saying, "Okay, we'll send some people." And then 2004 goes around, and as the guy, the king of Spain, I can only assume it's a king, and uh, he says, "No more. I'm yeah. withdrawing my troops from Iraq." Mm-hmm. Because U.S. Canning a bunch of oil there. Yeah. You haven't found any mass destruction weapons. He was all like, Dios mios, cuantos años tienes, no quiero Taco Bell. And they got all the troops right out of there. That was amazing. 
Kalastoma. Only if he asked nicely. Yo, Necesito, Nachos, Pinche Otto. I don't know what you're saying, but it's amazing. As I want some uh, burrito, uh, I want some nachos, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My Spanish is few and far between, but I know when a king says no more troops. I know that much. There's no more troops. 2004. Pull them out. See ya. Hasta no, luego, troops. No baby troops here. Pull it out. <laughs> uh, fox hunting is outlawed in the UK. What does the fox say? That group Who's, will go into the Hall of Fame someday. Yeah, oh, yeah, The definitely. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <clears throat> Who cares about foxes? All right? Yeah, they, they, the reason why they banned it is because there was only like, there was like four of kind species left and they were on endangered species. It's just rich people going out and hunting something that's super easy to find. Sorry, what are you saying? Are you pro hunting <clears throat> fox or anti? Anti. Me too. Yeah. Um, foxes, I think, all they do is steal eggs from hen houses. That's what I learned from yeah. books when I was a kid. Just let them do it. Who cares? <clears throat> there's plenty of eggs for everyone. Hey, well, there's a show that, there's a movie I watched, The Fox and the Hound. Oh, okay, the cartoon. Yeah. It's still a movie. Oh, absolutely it's a movie. Yeah. That, that counts for sure. Um, I think foxes, uh, can be like slightly domesticated. Some people keep them as pets, but I think they're kind of like raccoons to where they're just messy and they cause problems. Yeah, they're fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or they're sly, right? They Ooh. always say sly as a fox. Yeah. Um, some, here, la- you, some ladies have said it about me. That you're foxy or you're sly? Both. I like that very much. Um, foxes, I don't think, should be hunted. I think they're very adorable. I, I think a lot of times people just turn them into hats and coats, right? Yeah, they get such pointy noses. What? Can you imagine one doing a cocaine? A fox doing cocaine? <laughs> no, I don't think I can imagine that. <laughs> if any listeners out there are artists, you want to send us a picture of a fox doing lines of cocaine off a of hooker's tits. Hashtag uh, fox hooker blessed. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, yeah, you ever see if someone wearing a uh, fur coat? And then they have like um, like it's almost like a scarf or a little thing they wrap around themselves. It looks, it looks like the tail. It looks like the tail. Of Sometimes the fox. like the head is on there. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I mean, Ugh. like all the all the inside head is out, and it's just skin head. Right. And it's like like the eyes are all squinted. Like Ugh. how is that like attractive or it's appealing? Ju- it's just people having fuck me money. They're just flaunting their wealth. <laughs> Flaunting the fuck you money. Like I can, I can put this dead carcass with head or with uh, you know face intact, recognizable face intact across my shoulders. Right, because I, I can. So I, fuck I, I you. I don't want that. No. I, would, I wouldn't want that. No. That seems gross to me. Uh, and with that, I'm back in 2004. Yeah, I'm right there. Whoosh. I'm back in 2004. Let's do it. Ooh, I feel good. I feel great. I in 2004. How old were you in 2004? 23. 23? I was 29. So, actually, at 29, I expected to I expected to be dead. The unexpected. I expected to be dead oh. at 29. That's like That was my goal, was to die at, at age 29. So, a goal usually is something that you achieve. hope to achieve. Right. Well, hope to achieve, want to achieve. I tried. So, you were trying to yeah, die. Yeah, because I think I, I quit drinking in 2004, six. 17, 18, 19. Almost, yeah, 2000, yeah. 2000, what, four? So the year this, so Mr. Ed comes out, and you're like, that's it, no more drinking. I'm seeing a fucking horse talk. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, well, the talk like a black person. What do you, so was that a slip of the tongue that you said you wanted to die, or can you dig into that? Uh, no, because uh, Hank Williams died at age 29. He was 29 years old when he died. All right. And that was just like, that was my goal, was to like die by the, at 29 to be like Hank Williams. It's a weird goal. Because yeah. uh, to reiterate, a goal is something someone usually is working towards. Right. I, that, and I was working toward it. Yeah. yeah. Believe Pur- me, purposely. you. Yeah. Obviously, you were living a reckless lifestyle, but you were you were trying. I was not a recluse. Uh, a brown recluse? <laughs> Ooh, scary. Yeah, Sherman Helmsley. Ooh, Ooh scary spider. <laughs> Essentially, uh, the, the black man, Sherman Helmsley, is a brown recluse because he's dead, and so he's by himself underground. He's a, he's a brown recluse. Very good. Uh-huh. Way to bring it back. I'll take it. Uh, why do we choose to watch Mr. Ed? Three simple criteria. One, it had to be a one and done. Whether it aired or not is irrelevant, but only one episode was made. It did not go to series. I'm glad you said simple because they really are simple. People tend to complicate God. things, oh, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've, 
how many people I've talked to go, oh, can we go over the rules Break again? it down for me. I'm really having – no, it's yeah. super no. simple. Right? Super simple. You, 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 honestly, frequent flyers – I think this is a pledge I'm going to make all of you. It, we have the, all your information. I'm, I'm going to pledge allegiance uh, to the flag. Of the United States. Bring, it, bring it back into the schools, am I right? Oh, please, please do. Yes, sir. I, anyone who's got their name in the pachinko machine is a frequent flyer. I think I'm going to print up a little card, and it's going to have the three pillars of couch pilots. And then you can just keep that in your pocket as a reference. So anytime you come across a, a failed television pilot, and people often do, sure. just in their day-to-day, you can pull the card out of your pocket and see if it meets the requirements. Exactly. Right? I think that's a great idea. I'm sorry to interrupt. What, what's some of the other requirements? Uh, the second one is we had to find it on the interwebs. And number three, the most important one, it had to be free. We cannot pay for these. Even though we have wonderful Patreon supporters, we cannot afford to pay for these pilots. My daughter needs braces. I don't have the money for that. You think I want to pay for a pilot? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, sorry, my daughter, who was on this show. Uh, sorry. No braces for you. No braces for you. It's not. It, it must be my fault your teeth are bad because most Asians have good teeth. So it's my fault as your father. So I deeply apologize in a sarcastic voice. All right? <laughs> Where can you watch the show to find for yourself? Well, you can do so by subscribing to Couch Pilots in Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube. And, and you, you know, know what, what to do, do Tube. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. All right, back in our good plane. Yeah, back the electrical switches. Um, Honestly, they added a weird feature where the, the outlet can be put on fire if you want it to. Yeah. Well, I, we replaced it with a, 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 a GF, GFL? I think that's right. Yeah, a GFL. Because so. what happened is last week we were talking about how the outlet uh, turned black and was on fire. Right. And that's not usually how it's It was to in be. fuego. And, ooh, oh, you know some Spanish, too. Well, look at you. You're hiding it. For, you're sly as a fox, I tell you what. <laughs> Um, but the new outlet we got actually it was black on purpose. Mm-hmm. It is a black pe- plate that we put over, and then it, it can it can shoot flames if necessary. Right, so just for looks. Yeah, oh, just for looks. Uh, for all the ladies we take back there and want to impress with our laundry. All room. the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Oh, what do you got there? I was I was really dry. I couldn't. Oh, I thought you had a hair like a pube in your mouth or something. Why would I have a pube in my mouth? I don't have a what? Good, I, I don't have a good answer for that. Exactly. Go ahead. I think I, I wish think, I could. I wish I. Could. I tried while well, in between shows. I tried to find that porn video because I was going to send you the link. It's a good video. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we were but, talking about pornography offline because we're dirtbags. Um, I'm just a teenage dirtbag, baby. Come fly with me. <clears throat> I don't sing that good that song as good as Stephanie Clark did. She yeah. did a great job. That, and we're, of course, we're referencing the uh, the wonderful podcast uh, Karaoke Biggie. Free plug for you guys. You guys can sing and have a great time every Tuesday with Karaoke Biggie. What a great show! That Social is. Uh, summary of the pilot made for television movie. Fuck that! It was a pilot. Don't don't sell it to me. Don't don't. Oh God! I'm sorry. Dude, I'm sorry. No, this this. Oh. Do, do not put a 22-minute piece of garbage in front of my face and call it a made-for-TV movie. No. It's a pilot, okay? Unless it was edited, like, super far down. Like, maybe they made it into a movie, and, like, they chopped it up so much, like, ah, it's fucking just... Spoiler alert, this isn't very good, but it still made sense. So I don't know yeah. how they could have chopped it up. Anyway. Chop, 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 chop it up. It's based on the television show about the talking horse. You heard the uh, intro to the original classic version of the show up front. Uh, Sherman Helmsley delivers the voice for Wilbur Post's exceptional equestrian, the talking Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. No, Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. Mr. Mr. Ed. Dot Ed. Okay, yes. So. Sherman Helmsley, what was he in? What would I recognize him from? Moving on up. Moving on up. To the east side, to the east side. Oh, the the, the Mr. Jefferson. In, in the sky. Mr. Jefferson. That was Mr. Jefferson. Now I now I, I put a face with a name. Yeah. Um, they moved on up. That to me that would seem like more of an inconvenience. Like the further up you go, like that's just farther that you have to like carry or hold on to your What's, stuff. What was that like? Ain't no fry in the chicken. Wait, you know. Um, ain't no. F- ain't no sizzup in the syrup. Ah, that's what it is. That S- makes more sense. Sipping on some scissor. Oh. You ever hear that song? I hate the way he walked. 
He well, the thing about him is he had swagger. He had confidence and swagger, and that is a potent mix. He drove a swagger wagon. Interesting facts. Ooh, interesting facts. Um, Jason has scoured the internet. His knuckles are fucking moving on up, pussy and bloody. But he's gonna pussy, pussy and bloody. Check out my pussy. <laughs> hey, nice pussy. Uh, he scoured the internet for some f- interesting facts. Uh, it's just a segment of the show. Apple Podcast says, "Hey, what are you gonna call this segment? We need that before you apply." Hey, Spotify. That's the reason we're on there, and most of our shows that we like to listen to are not on there. It's because we have named our segments. It's a tedious process, but it's a necessary process. So, this is a part of the show where I deliver facts that are absolutely true. I give them to you, the uh, the listener, as a as a present. It's a gift to receive these stuff about the show you wouldn't normally know unless I didn't scour and get all these pussy hands. <clears throat> um, all the pussy hands. The the only thing that we ask is that you don't comment on these facts and you don't uh, share your feelings with them about uh, about these facts with someone else. They could be a loved one. They could be a stranger you're passing on the street. Yeah, don't, it doesn't matter. But right? if you have a four legged friend, either a dog or a cat, maybe even a hamster. Like we said last week, go ahead. Just, just no primate, because primates, oh, they can... don't do a primate. Yeah, don't do a primate. Oh, so stinky. Um, and we ask this because these facts, nothing you say or think or do will change the facts, so please don't even try. Don't, don't even try to ruin someone else's experience. And with that, um, of course, interesting facts-wise, Mr. Ed was a remake of the 1958 television series, and you said you, you used to watch it on occasion. Yeah, on Nick, on Nick at Nick, 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 Nick at Night. Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah. uh, Drake Sather. Uh, oh, this is a, this is a fact for you. You're, this, you're, you're gonna think this is a fact. <laughs> this shit was built in the back hell. of his back burbs. I think he hurt himself. Oh my god! Is that a turnip? Um, Drake Sather, writer and creator of Ben Stiller's Zoolander, was the showrunner of the reboot, and apparently he was only doing it uh, for money and was ashamed of that very fact. Uh, the lack of apparent artistic integrity in his mind reportedly pushed him over the edge, and he shot himself oh. in 2004 before the show was even released. He shot himself because of this pilot? He bangs. He bangs. He he drops. He drops. Wow, that is interesting. Man, to think somebody would kill themselves. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. All because I mean, we've watched some horrible pilots, but I've never wanted to kill myself. That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, I got a couple other facts, but I'm not even. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, we're on a roll. No, we're not on a roll. Um, What's wrong? A roll uh, would uh, mean like there's forward momentum, but you've you've put the brakes on this show because I, why? What are you talking about? <sighs> We've never had a fact quite like that. I will that's be. a that's a death fact. It's a death fact. And um, I mean, I, I feel like you're just fucking with me now, and I don't know why. I don't know what I did to you. I don't know what you're talking about, Jason. I'm just that's an interesting fact. You're, somebody, somebody you're, shot. You're commenting on the facts. <laughs> it you're, was you're commenting on the facts. It was a death fact. It's different. So it's not different. That's an asterisk, just like Barry Where? Bonds. Where's just, where's the where's the asterisk? Where's right this rule book? Give me a pen. Right there, asterisk. Whenever there, whenever there's a death fact, you can say that it's interesting. You're making rules up as we go along. How am I supposed to get these cards printed for all the frequent flyers with these pillars? All this information that is factual and consistent. No, you just said truth. that the, the cards were just going to be the pillars. It had nothing to do with it. It's the, the same principle as having facts. That's Fuck me, right? Come on, dude. You tell me that's not interesting. Look me in the eyes and say that that guy shot himself. How, how it's bad? It's not this- my place to say that. We say that every episode. Honestly, I've been handing the the reins over to you recently to communicate that to the listeners that what the pillars are of interesting facts. And you stop me. When did I stop you? <laughs> when I was trying to explain interesting facts, you took it over. Well, you it's did, like you, you take everything over. Like you're supposed to get it up. Yeah, and then you do everything in the middle, and then you bring it back down. Right. And I was just trying to do everything in the middle. So this is a slap in my face because I was assisting. I'm not slapping you. nothing in your face. I'm saying the fact that this guy. It was such a horrible. Pilot. You're making this about something else. You're making it about how the I, fact. I'm making it about a, how, the how fact. I took over explaining interesting facts. I thought it was an assist. I thought we have a back and forth rapport. What am I, Michael Jordan, and you're Scotty Pippen, or no. are you Scotty Pippen? No, my name I'm is Michael. Jason, and your name is Blake. 
We've never been on a team together. How are you going to assist? I'm not give you an assist. I, you're trying to like mess with my head and get me off track. I don't know if this is how you fight with your wife, but I'm not Molly. It is. Okay? It is, exactly. I'm not, I'm not Molly. I'm not going to fall for that what bullshit. Are the, just shut up. And, what are the other oh, facts? Oh, now I shut up, huh? What fuck, are the, fuck what? me, right? <laughs> fuck me. What are the other facts? God damn it. Fox show. Listeners. Shit. Listeners, we need you to solve this one. This fight is going to remain um, at Couch Pilots Pod. Who's right, Jason or Blake on this? What's the hashtag we're no, going to use? No, let's take this one step further. This is what we're going to do from now on. The name of the section is Interesting Facts. Right. I can't change that. How we approach that segment of the show can be changed. So let's do this. Let's leave it up to the listeners to decide going forward if we can comment on these facts. And we'll just make that permanent. Hashtag comment. Or Cupid. Hashtag Cupid. Comment or Cupid. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Whenever I see you happy with me. It, it, Com- <laughs> comment means you can comment. Cupid means you're going to get an arrow shot through your fucking forehead if you say anything about it. Thank you. Do you agree? That, I, that you No, do you agree that whatever the listeners decide, that's what we will do? Yes, I, okay. I agree. Okay. And I'm going to buy a bow and arrow. And I don't care if there's one or seven... <laughs> tweets well whatever is decided <sighs> hashtag comment or cupid very really very funny actually um i was really not happy to read the rest of these facts but i've you've, a smile has returned to my face what can i say thank you uh oh you're welcome sir fox shelved the series altogether after sather's suicide uh, in 2012 waterman entertainment announced they were developing a new feature film based on mr ed Interesting facts over. Okay. All right. So they did not put this pilot out because the guy shot himself? Is that how I heard that? I think that's it, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and you it know was, what? The guy, was, the guy took the job as the showrunner because he needed money, and it was so bad he shot himself. Mm-hmm. And then he shot himself, and so they didn't put it out. Yeah. Got, you know what? I'm giving it. A shotgun bump. Oh, a shotgun bump. We've never had one of those. Uh, so, uh, uh, there's virtually an unlimited amount of bumps that are available, I think. <laughs> I will say this, too. Um, it didn't relate directly to Mr. Ed, but uh, I, I found some information out there about Ben Stiller commenting on what a tragedy it was that he killed himself because he was potentially going to have a lot to do with Zoolander 2. Um, he appreciated and worked with him, I guess, a handful of times as a writer. Ben Stiller did. So um, there's more information out there about Drake Sather if you're interested. I know that I'm not. No. I know Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Jason's going to give us some Twitter responses. No, I'm not. He shot himself. Uh, oh, shit. What are we doing? Oh, Hyper Uppercut. I like that show. Greetings, humans. We are interrupting your scheduled program to let you know of our plans for do- do- domination. Hyper Uppercut has infiltrated your audio canals in the Fakakta Comedy Network to penetrate your minds with lewd humor. Any attempts to stop our tra- tra- transmission of subpar video game news will result in immediate listening device failure, resulting in injury or possibly death from laughter or boredom. Join us at Hyper Uppercut. Hyper Uppercut. Cut, 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 cut. If you say a word enough, it uh, sounds weird and loses meaning. Hyper Uppercut. Cut, 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 cut. This is me filling time while Blake pisses. Um, I will say that Hyper Uppercut is a great program. A, um, I would call it a sister show to uh, Couch Pilots here. We used to all be part of a, a network, and essentially the network is still in play. We're all just friends who promote and support each other. Hypercut Percut says, what we're going to do is we are very hardworking men. There's three of us, and we have guests from time to time. We are going to talk about video games. And then uh, later in the week, we'll release another show called Final Draft, where they do like a fantasy draft. I, I know fantasy drafts from like fantasy football. I participated in a long time, but they do drafts about a bunch of different things. Most recently, I was on a uh, sandwich final draft. I don't, I don't, I didn't hear the outcome of that. I assume I won. No, you, didn't, you did not win. Oh, uh, I did not win. No, I did one. Oh, hold on a second. You, I'm yes, you right did now. one too. You, you did the basketball one. Who won the sandwich one? Mine was clearly the superior. Give me twelve or thirteen seconds. I'm going to find it for you. 
Oh boy. Um, you know, I was I was just talking hyper uppercut up quite up, a bit, say, <laughs> saying it was great. Um, but I don't know how good it is if I didn't win that sandwich one. I really, I really Ooh, had it. Sorry. Here's the sandwiches I had: uh, cheesesteak, Reuben, sloppy Joe, uh, BLT, and a gyro. What are what's a Here better amalgamation of sandwiches than that? Here, hit me. Who who won? Pickles had nine. Dutch Magneto had eight. Bottle Cap Kid had seven. Adam Z had four, and Sandwich Hawk had three. So you were right in the middle. You were two, two away from winning. Here, here's what happened when I was on there. Yours was assemble the greatest basketball team of all time. Fill all five positions with uh, players from the future, not future, I guess, but from current day to the past, live or dead. Pickles had 13. Biggie had three. Dutch Magneto had five, and I had three. Horrible. I don't understand. So, and I, okay, Dustin, we know you won. Okay. I, I, well, this it's. I, I think it's very. Um, <clears throat> it's fixed. It was. Oh yeah, it's. Fi- Here's the thing: is everybody that listens to that show is uh, the younger crowd. Okay, yeah. not from my era. So all these guys that I, all these people that I drafted, these people are like, I don't know who that is. This is how it's fixed because you say that, which makes sense. What you right. said makes sense, but I specifically. Was pandering with my choices, and you did good. And I you pandered pretty good. Were they the choices I would have made on my own? Maybe not necessarily, but I was pandering. So you weren't pandering, and you lost. No, I, I was pandering, and I, I lost. Didn't the pander, show was fixed. I would have done Kobe Bryant, the Bron James. Yeah, the show was fixed. Um, did you it, take it, the back end? Did you take four? What did you? What, what, I had the number one spot, baby. You had the number one spot, and yeah. you still lost. I didn't lose. It was fixed. Um, you know what? Uh, you know, listen. Go ahead and listen to Final Draft, and you too can see how it's fixed. It's a, it's fun. The show is fun, and it's a good listen. But it is fixed. Yeah. It's like those old quiz shows. You know, they they gave you the answers, and people would win, and it's all. It's not real, but it's fun. I will say that. Yeah, definitely. And I will also say now we talk about Mr. Ed, uh, the made for TV movie. It no. was not fun. Oh, you didn't like this? Oh boy, little little sneaky peek. DVD warning. Yeah, uh, it's not, we never really see that. It right? was and it was long. Like the DVD warning took up the whole screen. It was a very small type. I don't know this to be on a DVD too, so it's interesting to me that that would be there. Anyway, it's, uh, they're in New York City, right? That's where it starts. Uh, it's it's narrated by Mister Ed, who is again Sherman Helmsley from the Jeffersons, and he's narrating about New York City. Yeah, he says a guy moved his uh, family out to a farm because his daughter was a whore. Yeah. And the, it starts with a hot blonde talking on a phone, which is the daughter. Yeah, they moved to Granite Falls. Yeah, and we're and we're immediately the show oh, immediately yeah. starts. It, it goes. There's one picture, like there's like one like seven second, nine, five second, like video of the skyline of New York. Zoom, right to the girl, right to the hot young. Chick. And then there's a conversation immediately. Um, you have a husband and his wife, and they're talking about their move. And I will say the wife. Do you know recognize the wife? Yes, she's from uh, Once Upon a Time, and she was on the pilot that we watched. About was it about the? It was. It was one of the. Was it the one about the? Uh, the cops, but it was like spells and stuff. The yeah, yeah, because she went into the apartment that had all the, all the greenery. Was that her? Yeah. Okay, her name is Sherry Lee Fenn, oh and my she. God. No, no, no. Listen to this. Watch her on Twin Peaks. Okay. She was smoking hot on Twin Peaks. I think she's even in a movie where maybe her clothes come off somehow. Um, but her name is Sherry Lee Fenn. I think she's in her 50s now, but on the original run of Twin Peaks, I think she's even on the most recent run of Twin Peaks on, on Showtime, I think it was on. Or, um, well, yeah. like I said, she's on Once Upon a, T- Once Upon a Time, and that's now, and she's fucking hot. She plays the bad guy. The bad guy. She's a good-looking woman, and God. she plays the mom in this. And yeah, the husband's a lawyer. He wants to turn this this house that he had. He's, there's a barn there, and he wants to turn the barn into his office. Right. His, his daughter was being hoary and going to like raves and stuff, and so they move. She move, move into the country, going to eat a lot of peaches. He moves his family out, and they all think it sucks except him. Yeah. There's a barn. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is where we meet the handyman, handyman Jim, who is Jim who, Hendry, maybe. Yeah. What has he been in? He he does look familiar. He's probably been in a pilot or something we've seen. But he is. Oh, you know, he, is he the guy from Raising Hope? I think that's a Greg Garcia show. I think he was in that. Okay, but um, I've seen him in some other stuff too. I just can't picture it right now. He runs the barn, and he says, uh, "This horse here, his name is Mister Ed, and he comes with the place." And uh, he asks them why they move there, and all this information about Mister Ed staying there 
and why they're there, I really feel like this conversation should probably have already taken place before they've already moved in right. and are living there. Right, because he's like, I didn't know the horse comes with the place. If you're buying a big, huge ranch out in the middle of nowhere... you think you'd know. It, it's, believe me, if you have to have the inspections you have to have to, to, to buy a house... Somebody's You're going to have you, horse inspections, okay? Definitely have the horse inspection. Uh, and the Mr. Ed theme song is like... It's super quick. Two and a half seconds. And it looks like strips of bacon. The the words look like strips of bacon. Oh, yeah, they do. Delicious, mm. crispy strips of bacon. Oh, my gosh. The first problem, the gr- the kids are getting ready to go to school in the morning. Handyman Jim, there's a raccoon in the house. Everybody Everyone. runs out and screams. <laughs> oh, my God. There's a raccoon in the house. I, I would be kind of worried if there's a raccoon in the house. I don't know if I'd run away from it, though. I'm, I wouldn't be afraid of I a wouldn't, raccoon. I wouldn't run away from one. Raccoons, I feel like they can, raccoon? be, they can be reasoned with. What's the Beatles song? Rocky Raccoon. Rocky, a dumb song. That's a pretty bad song. They weren't all gems. Um, yeah, Jim is for some reason in the house. and he goes in, Yeah, he goes in the house. I don't know why he's still hanging around. What is his purpose? Yeah, you didn't buy him when you bought the house. You didn't buy a Just country. so you know, Mr. Ed the Horse here, he comes with the house. I come with the house. It right. wasn't like that. No. He's, he's just like hanging around. He's like, yeah, I'm just here. Uh, Wilbur is like, his daughter's getting ready to go to school, and he's like, you're not wearing that to school. She's got a belly button ring. Hell yeah. He starts talking to her belly button, too. It's kind of weird. And this is where I notice, um, oh, um, there's a laugh track here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was hoping you wouldn't bring it up. This is a weird combination, because so much of the classic sitcom, the tired sitcom is um they're in, you're in a studio on a set and there's laugh track right there's a lot of outdoor stuff yeah. here they're actually outdoors and it's always it's always off-putting to me when there's a laugh track outside for some reason right is that is that it's, off-putting yeah, to you it's like it's like a group of people are just following you around <laughs> laughing no yeah. it see it seems weird whenever they're outside it's very clear that they're they're outside and the sun is shining and the breeze is blowing and then there's a laugh track yeah, it's that the audio seems it's odd uh, it's odd to me it doesn't seem genuine well it's your brain and your eyes telling you that this doesn't match yeah i think you're ex- absolutely right um and so the handyman, I think his name is Jim Hendry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Jim, and he's he makes a lot of inappropriate comments about the wife. And here he's like staring at her ass. Yeah, I mean, like, I, don't get was, me wrong, I would too. I would stare at it too, but it's but inappropriate. I would comment to not the husband about it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stare at my employer's ass. I get yeah, I guess they employ who knows, but yeah, and he like he's very open about his how attracted he is right right to Wilbur, right to her husband, yeah. you know. No hair, don't care. He don't give a fuck. <sighs> so um they're in there and everyone kind of leaves and the, and uh, Wilbur is there and then Mr. Ed starts to talk to Wilbur and he offers him whiskey. And and Wilbur is like, okay. It was like, oh, what the I, fuck's going yes, on? I, you know. I've been working too hard. There's been a lot of stress with the kids and the move. I'm clearly dreaming or having some sort of psychotic break, right? Yeah, and it, it, if you've watched Mr. Ed, like the original, like the, the theme song we played, Sherman's voice is very off-putting. Like, it, it, it make, makes you kind of go, what? Because what? Yeah. it's a it's an older black guy yeah. talking urban slang. Yeah. And it kind of makes you, it's kind of like, there's a bunch of white people, and then here's this this urban voice. Yeah. It's it is, it, it's an odd mix. It, it's it's I think it's trying to add an element of diversity to the show. And if you watch this, when Mister Ed is talking, don't look at his mouth. Just assume that it's moving. Do you feel like it's CGI? It's so CGI. It's it's horribly it's pretty, CGI. It's odd, isn't it? It's really bad. It's really bad CGI. I would have shot myself if I would have oh, been geez. involved with this. <laughs> Mister Ed says he doesn't trust women and elk, and that's why he doesn't talk to ladies. <laughs> right. Um, never met an elk I didn't like. And he said, "I uh, I used to be a New York cop, so maybe that's where he's got some of his." No, sass. he was he was he was a New York cop horse. But I think they are police too. I think they have like when they die, they have like police funerals. Okay, for these animals. So I just I, want to make sure because for listeners, I because it sounded like you're like maybe he was a cop and reincarnated into this body. I oh, just, like a Puchinski scenario. <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Right. Uh, if, if you want to clear that up for us, listeners, please uh, hashtag comment or Cupid. Hashtag comment or hashtag Cupid. Uh, Kayla is the name of the daughter, I believe. And Wilbur is uh, trying to connect with her. He's trying to – and honestly, uh, me, I would love to connect with her too. Sure. Uh, he's like, you know what? We got a horse. 
Let's of course. Go for, let's go. A horse is a horse. Of course. Let's go for a ride. Let's let's talk. Let's go for a ride. Here's something we couldn't do in the city. Right. You can't, right? In the city, you can't ride a horse. You can punch a horse. You yeah. can punch a police horse in Philadelphia. You can punch a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, you know? hey So they go for a ride, and uh, here you see, here's some modern music. They play. They sprinkle a little bit of modern music here and there, popular you know, songs of the day. Um, Wilbur is leading the horse. He's uh, he, he, They ride together for a little bit, and then he gets off and he starts to uh, he's walk. He's like, I'll never, you, you won't have any, you know, brothers or sisters anymore. It's weird that he's riding so closely to his daughter. And but he's in the back. He's like, in the he back. should be in the front. Right. And then he's making jokes <clears throat> about his nutsack. Yeah. So it's oddly inappropriate. And he's leading the horse around. And then um, she's riding the horse still. And he's trying to connect with her in a conversation. And that she's referencing things he doesn't know. But the horse somehow knows popular culture. And he's <laughs> whispering to Wilbur, oh, John Mayer. Right. He's a popular musician. Right. He's like, oh, yes, yeah, you like John Mayer, the popular musician. She's like, oh, yeah. Oh my God, Dad! I can't believe you know that, Dad. I can't believe you know that, Dad. (laughs) Um, Later, uh, Hendry, the uh, the handyman, Jim, he he catches Wilbur talking. Well, let's back it up a little bit. Uh, And he starts talking to his daughter, and like, how'd your day at school go? And she starts discussing all these people, you know, these people, and she mentions Hank Simpson. Yeah, Hank Simpson. And that's her. Then the handyman catches because it set me up for something else. That's why I did. Oh, that's, sure. yeah, no, you're right. Um, he catches him talking. He doesn't know he's talking to the horse. He feels like he's just talking to him out himself out loud, or um, he's, I don't know. He's, just, he's he. This is this is the setup for what would be the rest of the show. People constantly being like, "Who are you talking to? Right. Why, why are you having this conversation? There's no one here except this horse, you know." Right. And that's the situation he's in there. Um, Ed then wants uh, Wilbur to ride him to the house of the boy that of Kayla- Hank, Hank Simpson. He's like, "I know who Hank Simpson is. He he's been there, done that. He's he's quantity over quality." Yes. Yeah, he's trying to run it up through all the broads locally, and he says, "I'll go over there. And I'll I'll, I'll no. like trample him." Wilbur says, "No, I'm not. I'm not doing that." He leaves the barn, and Mr. Ed goes to the phone, Mm -hmm. picks up the phone with his mouth, dials the phone with his hooves, and calls Hank and acts like the daughter, you know, Mr. Wilbur, hello? I'll kill you if you touch my daughter ever again. (gasps) Kayla, um... It finds oh no! Right after this, you have uh, Jim Hendry again, Be- constantly making inappropriate conversa- uh, conversation with with Wilbur's wife. It's it's weird. I don't know if I was in his shoes. I don't know if I'd be able to help myself either. I would be appropriate because that guy's paying my paycheck. I would be appropriately inappropriate. Oh! <laughs> uh, later, Kayla finds out about the phone call and is very angry with her father. And this is where it, she's like, she's like. Hank just called and said you threatened him. You threatened my boyfriend. I was like, this is your first day of school, yeah. and you already are calling him your boyfriend? She's obviously one of those fucking needy bitches, right? I think so. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Back in the barn, uh, Mr. Ed is working on a Zen garden. Oh, I love like, that. He's got like a little, it's a, one of those little boxes, and it's got sand, sand in it, and he's raking. He's got a little rake in his mouth. Yeah. It's I, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was unnecessary. It just yeah. seemed stupid. The whiskey was funny. The whiskey, I'll say, was funny. The sand, not so funny. So, um, so the, the 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 wife comes in and says, "Hey, you t- talked shit to our daughter's boyfriend. Uh, you're going to apologize." He's like, "I'll I'll go over there." She's like, "Nope, he's coming to dinner." Yep, we've already got it set up. He's coming over <clears> to dinner, and uh, while they're at dinner, Hank's got his hand on Kayla's knee, right at the dinner table, uh, above the knee. <laughs> yeah, he 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 seems slimy, doesn't he? He didn't at the very beginning, like for the first few seconds. Yeah, but he then, was talking about how like his dad had went away or something. But as soon as he touches her leg, he's like, slime alert. Yeah, slime alert. Wah, wah. Wilbur approaches or apologizes to Hank at the table. After dinner, Hank and Kayla, they make plans outside the, uh, outside to double fuck in the barn later. Yeah, he's like, you know, he's like, how about you meet me in the barn in a few hours? And I was like... That's weird. Like you're leaving. It's dark outside. Do you want you, this girl to stay up on a school night till three in the morning just to come into the barn to fuck you? Okay. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. <laughs> Damn it. 
I wish I would have thought of that one. Mr. Ed is spying on the situation. He's like, he's got his like head like through a bush, you know, like a, right. like a classic soap opera. Because you know, a, a, a horse can just roam around. He's got free reign of the yeah. Property. He just, just opened up the barn and opened up his little dial some orders a pizza. Right. <laughs> so he's spying and he hears the plan for later. He knows what's going on, um, and then uh, he tells Wilbur about it. Yeah. And uh, he's like, don't worry, I got a plan. And Mr. Ed's like, I got a plan. Next thing you know, uh, Hank's, Hank, Hank's sneaking into the bar, and he's like, you know, hey, are you there? And Mr. Ed does a very, very poor impression of the daughter, and it's like, hey, take off all your clothes and go pour, go smear this peanut butter on you. Yeah. And he's like, are you into some kinky shit? And she's like, yeah. And yeah. then uh, Jim's been catching all these animals throughout the show that have been the invading their raccoon. space. Yeah. Ricky, Rick, was, was it was Rocky, 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 Rocky Raccoon? Rocky. And I think there's a possum at one point. There's yeah. just all these different wildlife animals that keep making their way into the barn and into the house. And apparently, it's Jim's job to capture them and then store them in the barn. Yeah. Well, he's gonna he's gonna take them out to the country. He mentioned that at one point. He's like, "Well, aren't we already in the country?" He's like, "No, I take them further out of the country." <laughs> right. So uh, right then, when uh, what do we got here? Is this Hank Simpson? Now somewhere in the black mining hills of Dakota There lived a young boy named Rocky Raccoon uh, And one day his woman ran off with another guy Who is that? Is that George? Huh? Who is that, George? No! that that That's Paul! That's Paul? Yeah! And I'm like, what? Okay, sorry. I derailed. I apologize. Yeah, that's a... Uh... I apologize. <laughs> So they, uh, they said, the guy is he's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna penetrate this lady. It's gonna be awesome. So I'll put peanut butter on me. If that's what she wants. Well, he's like, he's he's like questioning whether he should do it. <laughs> and Mister goes, just do it, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right. I was like, I, when I heard that, I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, we're going down a different path. Um, so he does do it. They release the animals and they uh, they chase they chase Hank away. And, and I gotta wonder at this point, why wasn't Kayla out there? <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, you would think that she would be out there if if he was there. If there was a more specific time step, what was he just going to come in there and then wait for an hour or two in the barn? Hopefully, hoping that yeah. she. Do you think there? I don't know. That, that didn't make sense to me. Um, and then there was a joke made about I don't ride side saddle. That was kind of a gay joke that yeah. Mister Ed was making to Wilbur. I, don't know, I thought that was funny. Um, next day, Kayla is not into Hank anymore. She's found a 25 year old that Name, she's interested in. Yeah, Elroy or I don't know. El Elry, yeah, maybe. Um, <clears throat> next thing you know, uh, Jim's walking Mister Ed out to the trailer. He's going to take him away, and Wilbur's like, mm, probably just don't do that because I'm kind of grown attached to him. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to take him away. I'm taking off your hands. You don't have to worry about him. He's going to get turned into dog food. Right, and he's like, no, 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 I, I'll, I'll keep him. Yeah. <clears throat> Puts him back in the barn, and Wilbur's wife comes in, smoking hot, right? And she's like, hey, you, you want to fuck in the barn? And he's like, and, and Mr. Ed's standing there, he's like, man, you're sexy, let's let's go in the house. She's like, no, let's just, let's just fuck in the barn. Let's just fuck in the barn. And he's like, no. She's ready to get it on. Yeah. And I'm ready to watch that oh, happen. Oh, I was, I was so hoping we'd see some tatas. I thought we were going to see full penetration. Mm. And, and not the case at all. No. And he picks her up. What guy can pick up his girlfriend or yeah, wife? She, she's got a little heft to her. Right. Lady. What guy can do that, really? Uh, I can't. And Mr. Ed uh, says something about, he, he, you know, what's the big deal? You've already seen my junk. Yeah, it's like a horse dick joke right at the end. <laughs> yeah, they, they top off this made-for-TV movie. Now they pinpoint it with a suicide, and then all, and end it with a huge horse cock joke. Funny uh, little thing about horse cocks is I was watching this video on X Hamster the other night, and it was this girl. It was a POV. It was like a, a cockle video, yeah. and she had a horse dick dildo. I was like, you spent money, a lot of money on this thing that you can only get a eighth of it in your vagina. Sorry, <laughs> I probably should have. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. I watched the whole thing. Usually, um, usually we watch a pilot, and then the pilot contains turbulence. I think we contain turbulence in this. <laughs> yeah. The show has become... Uh, hey, first-time listeners, welcome! 
See you later. It's never like this. <laughs> it's almost always like this. Um, Mr. Ed, back in the day, used the word wholesome to describe these old shows. That's what that show was. It was wholesome. It was there was no CGI white. back then. It was they put peanut butter on his teeth. There's no band aids back then. They, they they yeah peanut butter on the teeth. They Courtney a, who? Yeah right. They put a carrot up the horse's ass to make his mouth move. Um, if you watch Mister Ed now, like it's not good. You know, I don't think Mister the original is Mister Ed is very good. I think there are some redeeming qualities. I I, I do kind of like some episodes of um, uh, oh Dennis the Menace. Uh, shows like Leave It to Beaver, but I put my I put my mind, I I go back when I watch the show I go back in, in my mind. mind, and it's it's wholesome, it's 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 clean. Judged on the merit of that time, I understand, but it's it's very tough to revisit those things in in modern time, um, and and for whatever reason, maybe it's because of just the general lack or limit limitations of choice. But that show worked. This reboot. Did not work. No, it did not work. Um, go ahead and ask the question. What would you? Uh, why didn't this show work? <laughs> <clears throat> this should have been a black family that moves to the country. It would have made more sense. It wouldn't have been such a if an African American family moved from New York to the country so for the same reason. Fam- okay, an urban family. Then when we hear Mister Ed talk. It makes more sense. So you still want to it, keep Sherman Helmsley as yeah, a voice. Yeah, it, it was just so abrasive how it didn't coincide together. But you, you don't think that was part of what they were going for, is having this diversity or these two different style no, voices? It, there's, there, no. Okay. There was, it, you could have got all these lines across without that. But make it, make, if you want to update it, if you want to make it, you know, if you want to make it now... Right, you, you you make an an urban family goes to the country. Yeah, they're gonna eat a lot of peaches. <laughs> great band, I saw them once. It was great. President of the United States, where at? Um, they played a festival. It was a, a family fun festival. It was free. A lot of F's there. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, in Decatur, Illinois, and I actually got to meet the lead singer. That's awesome. It was cool. They were a cool band. I do like them. They're still around. They still play in like the Seattle area once or twice a year. Cool. That's where they're from. Anywho. Presidents of the United States of America. We yeah. should mention that's who we're talking about. I thought I said Presidents of the United States. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I mis- my, my mistake. I apologize. <laughs> I don't, you, you may proceed. Thank you. The I don't think this pilot worked because this premise is very silly. They used to have shows back in the 50s called, like, My Mother the Car. You know? They used to have weird shit like that. Uh, movies like... Um, the, you know, the incredible Mr. Limpet, where he's a man is a cartoon fish. Right. Or Shaggy D.A., you know, where right. a man is a dog that's a district attorney. Or Pruchinski. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Do you remember what, like, the original premise of the original show, like how they got together, Wilbur and Mr. Ed? No, not at all. I'm curious if he wasn't, he... wasn't he a writer? I thought he was a writer. Yeah, I wonder if he bought that house and Mr. Ed was just there? I don't know. It's very uh, Warner Brothers, you know, dancing frog thing where no one else can see it. I, I just think silly premise shows are, are very risky and rarely pay off. Yeah, you know, like we often we go back to the well of you know irony and say um, Cartoon Network with Adult Swim. They get they do some weird ass shit, but it's only for twelve minutes and it's about all you can stomach of something like that. And some of it's actually really good. I don't know if this would fall there. They, they'd have to wildly no, this, change that. Yeah, they would have to make it over the top funny. Yeah, and then there's a too big of a budget here with all this outside shit. They'd have to do it on a weird little sound stage with stuff. And, and, and having animals, it, I would think that nowadays with PETA and everything, having animals on set and being a main character, there would be a lot of restrictions. It would, yeah. it would, it, they would slow production down big time. I think you're probably right. So but that, that's, I think, just the fact that it's a gimmick is enough to say why this didn't work. Right. If you were to improve it, yeah, maybe maybe making it more bizarre and weird and putting it on a different channel like a, an Adult Swim would work. Adult Swim was around in 2004. Hmm. It wasn't as weird as it is now, but it was, uh, it was a real round. If it had survived, I don't know. I mean, like, how did... And like, <laughs> when the original Mr. Ed was on, they wanted like 35,000 episodes a year. Right. It's an unbelievable amount. I cannot, I have no idea how that show lasted and and where they went with that show. Like, I can't recall any specific episodes. Right. And I I think they probably 
re redid a lot of episodes. You know what I mean? Like the, the premise, a lot of the materials. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure that's the way it went. I, I don't know. Yeah, how many how many hijinks can you get in with the horror? It's just it's it's very limiting. Here's a question: Have you ever had sex in a barn? Ooh, um, I don't think so. Would you have sex in a barn? Sure. I know because you're 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 kind of a germaphobe in a way. No, I don't think so. If if <clears throat> if you know the things about me that I know about me, you would probably disagree. Yeah, I would totally have sex in a barn. Sure, why not? Would you care if that horse was watching? Um, unless it's Even a horse if, that could talk, of course. No, if he could, if you know that horse could talk, would you still have had sex with her? Okay, well, am I? Well, let's. Uh, pro- well, yeah, <laughs> it's very obvious. Yes. No, am I going to live with that horse? Am I going to have to commu- uh, communicate with that horse on a daily sure, basis? Sure, your office is right next to him. Okay, well, I didn't know I'm living there, and this is just a barn that I found to have sex in. Um, I don't think so. I don't want to have sex. Tr- well, it's, he's going to comment on it. He's going to be weird about it later. Fuck that guy, right? I, He's like, I banged her. You didn't. She's I, hot. I'd, I'd fuck her. Which one? In the barn. The mom or the daughter, right? Well, the, at the the age of the daughter in that now, yes. I think the age of the daughter, the the actress, I think, was very clearly like 20. Or okay, older. well, I would have fucked her, yeah. Okay, there you go. That's the answer I want. But you know what? To be honest with you, I would have fucked the mom before the daughter. Oh, merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. Again, new listeners, we usually don't do this much dick comedy. I really feel like this is very much on par for us. Um, IMDb score. What, what do you think that would be, Miller Lite? I'm going to say a 5.7. Are you fucking with me? No, I'm not fucking with you. 5.6. Oh, so close. 5.6 from 34 damn, that ratings. Pretty good. That is pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty good. Um, no Probably. critic reviews. No I'm viewer reviews. Pat myself on the back. Yeah, you should. You deserve it. There's no reviews for this thing. What? It always surprises me when there's a lack of information for something that's building on an existing property. Right. Um, while there are no reviews, I, you and I have some reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCI Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort... I, I don't mind that, but what is the uh, what's the draw for to do that? Because I know that drunk lullabies have great numbers. That that pocket, so I'm thinking oh. it's because of doing that. So it's like Dustin puts a lot of hard work into the show, but you think it all comes down to opening bottles of, and cans of beer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, just just before we give our ratings on this, yeah, um, gonna go ahead and give a shout out. To failure to launch, they have done an episode on this same. Oh, have you heard it? Yeah, I've listened to it. What, so, what, what do you What do you think of their episode, and what did they think? It's been a while since I listened oh, to well. it, but I knew I know that because when I started watching, I was like, "Oh, this is it." So listen to ours. Yeah. Listen to theirs on Facebook or not Facebook <laughs> on Twitter. Tag us both and say we both are awesome, and then hashtag it, comment, or hashtag Cupid. Thank you. Oh, That'd welcome. be funny because they wouldn't know what the hell that's about. That's, that's they would have no idea. They don't. Um, listen, they don't listen to that show. <laughs> hey, who does? Right? Um, when, when your when your show is better than theirs, they're not going to listen. Uh, I agree. One to seven. That's the rating scale that we're working with. We have to assign a number to this. So this everything that we're doing is all for nothing. If we, at the end of the day we can't put a little pin in it and say this is this is the end game, this is where we've landed. Why listen to this show? Because we're just going to say, "All right, good night, folks. Have That's a it. have a great day. No, Goodbye." This is, this is the bow. This is the tight little bow and the name tag on the present. That's right. One to seven. One is the worst score you can get. Seven is the best, and they're all assigned. Uh, one through seven, they're all assigned characters from the classic television show Wings from the 1990s. One is the worst, seven is the best. Last episode, I did the numbers and you did the names. Let's reverse it. All right. Uh, number one, the worst you can get. Roy Biggins. Number two. Faye Yetten. No, number three. Antonio Scarpacci. Number four. Billy Hackett. <laughs> number five. Lowell Mathers. <laughs> Number six. Helen Chibble. What, what are you saying it like that for? Are you mocking me? Number seven. Brian Eckett. All right. All right. All right. I, I guess that's how I me? sound. No, do no, you, no. Do you ever leave here on Monday nights and go, what a 
fucking shooting. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, no. Oh, that makes one of us know. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm just sorry. Um, one to seven <clears throat> is the scale. Yeah. You you nailed all of them pretty perfectly. Um, I would say I turn to you. How do you rate Mr. Ed? Got to give it a once upon a time bump. Okay. She is so smoking hot. Short, hair, short dark hair. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for it. She's beautiful. <sighs> With the bump, I'm giving it a two. This was fucking annoying. This was horrible. Um, handyman Jim was creepy and unnecessary. Uh, thank you for only being 20 minutes long. I'm giving it a two. Yeah, I get you. Um, I think I'm giving it a two, but then I got to give it a little bump because that daughter was hot. The wife was hot. Bump, 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 bump. Number three, okay. Mr. Ed, thank you very much. Not a good show. No. Not very Don't watch it. There's, there's, it. It's hard to not laugh at least once at a show like this. There, there's, there's things that make you giggle, but it's not good. At the end of the day, I'm not watching a series. I'm glad it didn't happen. You're just watching this. The only reason you're watching this episode is to see these two beautiful women. That's that's the only reason. That's the only, Yeah. If I, if I went back and had to explain to someone why you'd watch it, that's the only thing I would say. Yeah. Uh, Sherman Helmsley, I thought he was fine as the voice. It didn't bother me. Um, but the first time you heard it, didn't you? Didn't you kind of like take a like what? what? Like, uh, well, I mean, knowing that I was going to hear him, mm. like, the research I did, I wasn't off put by it. Okay. But I, I didn't. I th- I thought it added an element. of Do you diversity. think that it would, if it was a black family, it would have been a better show? Um, I think that would have been an interesting choice, but I would want like a stuffy white guy to be the horse okay. then. There, I think there needs to be right. that contrast in, between the horse and the family. Okay. Um, so I, <laughs> the horse and the family. There's gotta be, there's gotta be this between the horse and the family. That was a great Rob Reiner show, wasn't it? Um, I, um, yeah, I didn't like this. It wasn't very funny. It wasn't good. Uh, God, the wife and the daughter were fine, God. and I thought the horse had had its moments, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's not very good. And with that, uh, the two and the bump, a bump, a bump, the number three, we close the book on Mr. Ed, and we're never going to speak of it again. Ever. Very good. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of Kelly's Kids. Here's a little something to whet your whistle. Uh, the Brady's friends, Ken and Kathy Kelly, announced uh, plans to adopt a little boy named Matt from a local orphanage. They wind up adopting Matt's friends, an Asian and an African-American, and upsetting their racist next-door neighbor. When the boys find out about their neighbor's less-than-welcoming attitude, they run away to the Brady's, but Ken and Kathy convince them there is nothing to worry about. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classic label links in our show notes. Or download the app for Daily Motion and, and check, check out, out all, all the, the commotion. commotion. Um, so we got a little bit, just a, a sentence or two to talk about real quick. When I say the Brady's, I mean the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. For amber waves of, of grain. grain. Poor purple, purple mountains, majesty. majesty. That's the oh, way we fuck. became the Brady Bunch. Down, down, down. Mom always said, don't play ball in the house. This is what we're talking about here. It's um, a crossover. A while back, we watched an episode that was dumped into the final season of The Office. It was going to be a spinoff with the character Dwight called um, The Farm. And that's what's happening here. Okay. That this is an episode that was part of a season of the Brady Bunch, but it was for a spinoff called Kelly's Kids. And honestly, to me, I haven't seen it yet. It looks like it would be a progressive step by introducing oh, an Asian time. and a yeah. black kid, and definitely. But it didn't work, so we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> but until then, what, what, won't, won't you please contact the show by going to couchpilotspodcast.com. Everything you need to contact us is right there right yeah definitely couchpilotspodcast.com you can email us from there you can uh listen to any episode we've ever had just go to the search engine or just there's a calendar like of like date wise you can search like what were they talking about in 2012 really it's really cool how they organize and chop that up our facebook twitter instagram it's all there it's just a simple click away you can well, you can also get to uh the our dial-in number is on that facebook uh, on that 
that page. So. 910-745-6871. 910-POLITS1. Yep. Give that a call. Leave us a message any time of day. Uh, we usually... will play whatever message you leave, we will play. Yeah, but call us in the middle of the night. That's that's the best time to call us, right in the middle of the night. The stewardess loves when you call in the middle of the night. Um, there's also, we mentioned it earlier, the Patreon page. Uh, Patreon is a place where you can support people who are, you know, in, in their artistic endeavors, which in essence, this is what this is. So... If you like the show, if you want to donate one time or even make it a monthly thing, you can do that there. And there are different uh, levels of rewards that you can get as well. Sure. The more, yeah, the more you give, the, the bigger the reward. Mm-hmm. And um, the more you say to our frequent flyers, the better the end of the show is. Do you have anything you want to say to them? Frequent flyers, please rate and review us. Take that extra couple seconds. Go on your I, iTunes, Apple, whatever it is. Is it going to kill you? No, it's not. It. it Give us five stars and say, this is good. How about, how about this? If you don't rate us, I'll kill you. You know what? I, I've i wanted to shoot myself before. and Oh, I don't mean you specifically. No, 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 no. Please don't interrupt me. If we don't get five oh, Jesus. Apple Podcast ratings oh, my God. of five by the next episode, oh. I'll shoot myself in the face. Holy shit. You heard it here first, folks. Um, and I don't think you can afford a proper burial, so you really need... <laughs> To uh, to contact the show, leave us uh, you know messages, promote it, and leave some ratings because I, I I need. This is what happens if he's not here. I take it up, I take it right back down. There's nothing in the middle. Hate me today. Hate me tomorrow. And with that, this you know the song. I do Hate know it. Hate me for all the things I didn't do for you. <laughs> you happy with that? I love Blue October. Their, their, their latest album sucks, but I love Blue October. Would you do that song on uh, Karaoke Biggie? If they'll ever have me on, I want to do a Blue October song. I think I think I know. If, if they ever have me back on, I think I know a song I want to do. Uh, St. Elmo's Fire. You ever hear that song? <laughs> I think I really want... Yeah, I heard that. That wasn't the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, <laughs> You're so excited about Blue October. You're, you blew your pants. <laughs> hey, folks, I need $700 to get my dog's tooth fixed <laughs> and a tumor removed. Came out of nowhere. <laughs> so $2 think, well, on Patreon. I, I think I'm just going to let you go for a minute. This is good. Go ahead. <laughs> Guys, listen. <laughs> I, was, I was ready to close the show about a minute and a half ago. This is good, though. What else you got? Your dog's tooth's falling out. Here's what's going down. <laughs> my car is fucked up. My dog needs her tooth removed and a tumor removed. Yeah. My wife's car is about dead. I'm four hundred dollars behind on my mortgage. Please listen to the show and rate it and review it. <laughs> An earnest plea. Is that right? <laughs> earnest for plea. I can't do. Hey, that's very good. Ernest, Ernest, play. Check us out on Patreon. <laughs> fucking stupid. Why is that stupid? I hate that fucking guy. You hate Ernest? Huh? Well, there's, there's, there's some Ernest on the horizon. Boy, I, I don't, I don't hate Ernest. I hate how seventy five people have all of a sudden done Ernest. All because of one smart ass comment. <laughs> No, oh, I boy. love it. I love everybody that does it. I just, it's, it's, whew, it's just been intense the last few days. Dude, look, you either get Ernest or you don't. All right, man. I want to do Ernest Goes to Jail. That's the one I want to do if I'm invited. To the Ernest podcast? You're uninvited, unfortunately. Wow. Jason, I love you, buddy. We really have got to end this. Now. Love you. All right, I love you too. Um, with that, the this pi- pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight. On Couch Pilots. I love you. Bye-bye. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip. And we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day.